Hi everyone, it's Ken LaRue from Autodesk and this video is a video tutorial for Smoke 2015. First of all, let me quickly talk about the content we're going to be using. This content is available for download, so you can download the actual files and you can follow along as I perform this tutorial. The content is from a short film called The Place Where You Live. And this film was created by Alexis Van Herkman, who just wrote a book named Smoke 2015 Essentials. It's a great learning resource for Smoke 2015. If you want to find an actual printed book, it's available at Amazon.com. It's available from the publisher itself, Wiley.com. But he created the film with the intention of using the content of the film in his book. We, Autodesk, also have rights to use it for demos, which I used at NAB this year, and inside of tutorials such as this. So that is the content I will be using for this tutorial. And I know I will probably go faster than some people would prefer me to go, but that's because I'm trying to get in as much information into the time frame that I have for this tutorial. But that's also why the video has a pause button, a rewind, and a play button. So you can go back and watch something over a couple times if you need to, because I've covered something a little too quickly and you want to really understand it, then just go back and rewatch it a couple times until you feel comfortable that you've learned or understood what I was showing and then you can move on. And also I'd like to mention while this video is going to go very deep into smoke, especially the 3D compositing tools and connect effects and so on, I really want it to be beneficial and useful to anybody trying to learn smoke, whether you're a beginner or even if you have been using smoke for a while. So when I was creating this tutorial, I was thinking of the person who is relatively new to smoke. So if you have been using smoke for a little while, some of the stuff I'm going to be covering, you probably already know it. But I really believe even someone who's been using smoke for a while is going to benefit and get something out of this tutorial. Because as I said, we're going to go pretty deep into the tools and I'm going to cover a lot of the different workflows that are available in the software. So we're looking at the end result of the shot we are about to create. In the film, the woman, the talent, wears special contact lenses that allow her to view these heads up displays that she uses for computer, communication, entertainment, and so on. And this is what we're going to build. So let me first play this back just by hitting the space bar. There was a very specific look that Alexis wanted to create with the heads-up display. A lot of it has to do with obviously the coloring, the grading, the transparency, and the, the blurring of it. The depth of field that was used to create the illusion of these elements all floating in front of her when they're really not there. She's only seeing them because of the heads-up display. That's really what this tutorial is going to be about. So once again, if you haven't downloaded the content, you should download that content if you want to follow along. If you don't want to follow along, you just want to watch. Fantastic. You can also do that. Let's create a new project, though, and start from scratch. Now, obviously, if you have not launched Smoke yet, you can launch it. And then from the splash screen, you can create a new project. But since I'm already in Smoke, I'm going to create my project from within here. I'll go to the File menu. I'll choose Project User Settings. I'm going to choose New. I'm going to call this Tutorial HUD, hit the Return key. Now Resolution 1920, 1080, we're going to be working at 10-bit, 16-bit floating point for graphics, 23.97 for my frame rate, preferred format, ProRes 422HQ, leave that all default, this is all great. Click the Create button, then I'll click the Load button. Once it's loaded, I'll click close and we are now in a brand new project named Tutorial HUD. I'll go to the Media Hub. We want to import our files. Just so you know, I'm going to have a couple extra files that I will be importing into my project that you won't have in the downloaded files. You don't need those files. I'll be using them just to demonstrate something. The files you downloaded are all you'll need to complete the shot. Navigate to where you put that media. I've got it in a folder called 02 Tutorial Heads Up Display. This is what I was just talking about. In your folder, you're only going to see two clips. It's all you're going to need. I'm going to have four clips. Don't worry about it, though. But I'll select all four of them. I'm going to import these with my cache source media off. I want to just link directly to the footage. I don't want to create intermediates. So I'll just drag and drop this into my folder. Actually, you know what? First of all, let's create a folder. I'll right click and choose New new folder, name it media. Then I'll take all four of these, drop it into the media folder. And then if you double click on the subfolder called HUD, you'll see we've got a bunch of different elements. Let me double click on this so you get the preview window. So these are a bunch of different elements we're gonna to use to create the heads up display. Let me close that. 
And I'm gonna just take the folder, HUD, and drop it on the media folder, which then imports it. Let's go back to the timeline tab. As we know, a sequence is automatically, let me bring my UI up a little bit here by grabbing the bar and dragging it up. As we know, the sequence is always created, a default sequence is created when you create the project and the settings of that sequence are based on the project settings that we set up when we created the project. So we're gonna use this sequence right here. If you wanted to create a new sequence, you can right click, choose new, and then go to sequence. But I'm gonna use the one that's here. Let's select the clip that ends with the letters SN. This is the background clip we're going to be using. Let's click the yellow insert button, or you could have hit F9. That clip is now brought in. Next, I'll select the top clip that ends with the letters GL, and I'll just drag it right from the source viewer and drop it above the original layer that was created when we did the insert. So a new layer will be created and he will be placed on the top layer, the second layer. Let me zoom back a little bit. Obviously, I prepped these video files to be exactly the frames that I wanted to use inside this tutorial. So that's why we didn't have to set any in or outs or anything like that. All right, let me hit the page down key to go down to focus on the bottom layer. So as we said, the concept is we want to create the heads up display floating in front of her. And one of those elements is going to be this video of him. That's the husband named Arthur. We also want to go and use those other elements that we imported that are in this HUD folder, something like this here, this desktop clip. We've got a chat room with a minor animation, the main screen, an animated graph, some code that's gonna appear, the brain response indicator, and a rotary dial. So these are the elements we're going to have to composite together to create that. But first of all, we're gonna prep and work on this clip of Arthur, our talent here. So I want to first start to create a specific color look to this footage. First of all, it's way too dark, so we want to lighten up. But besides that, let's create a very stylized grade to it. I want to create a very bluish, desaturated look, but I still want his skin tone to be more saturated than the background, than everything else, and have a little more warmth to it. So we're going to do this using multiple color correction tools directly in the timeline. For right now, I do not want or need my source window up at the moment, so I'm going to hold the Option key and hit the 1 key, which is the hot key for switching to the 1 player. Or you could always come to the Mode box here and choose whatever display layout you want. But as I said, we're going to stay with just 1 player for right now. With that clip selected, the footage of Arthur, I'm going to go to my Effects ribbon, click on the Effects button, and I will add a Color Warper. The color warper is added in the flow. It is currently selected and we get a subset of its parameters. Let's just take the white and drag it to the right to lighten up the scene. I'll go to about 1.5. And then I wanna step into this color warper tool and access everything it offers. So over here, we have the editor button right under auto key. I'll click on it. We enter into the editor for the color warper. I'm going to adjust my shadow, my midtone, and my highlight, all of them to have a blue tone. So I'll drag the shadows down into the blue till I see about 67. We'll take the mid-tone, drag that down to about 67 also, or 70. I'll take my highlights and drag that down also. You can even drag the warp ball down into blue a little bit to create a very blue shift, if you will. This adjustment to the warp ball is going to affect the hue value, and it will also desaturate the entire image a little bit. Now the next thing I want to do is desaturate elements in this poster even further. So we're going to need to do some selective color correction. And this is the strength of the color warper inside of Smoke 2015. It has all these keying tools available to us. Now they're grayed out as of right now. That's because we're working on what is called the master. Over here where it reads work on, you'll see it says master. But if I click on it, I get a fly out and I have three selectives in each color warper. If I choose Selective 1, my image goes gray, and all these tools now become available to me. Now, if you wanted to use a defined preset, such as red, you see where it's R, I click on that, you'll notice that I now am selecting only the values that are considered red in the image. And you can see over in the color cube, these two diamond shapes just encompassed or surrounded the red values inside the cube. These diamond shapes allow you to control the softness and the tolerance of the actual mat you are pulling. You have other defined presets for green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, and so on, and shadow, midtones, and highlights. You can easily pull a mat based on those ranges. But what I want to do is choose Pick Custom. When I do that, I get a little eye picker. 
I'm just going to come up here in this area and I'm going to start clicking and just drag down a little bit. So we've sampled that color that is in this poster. I want to take this further though. So I'm going to hold Control and Option, zoom in, Control Command and pan over. I'm going to click where it reads Tolerance and activate that. Now if I click and drag in the view, I'm adding more color, I'm altering the tolerance and I'm increasing the values that would be part of the mat. Let me choose fit from our flyout for our zoom value. And also let's take a look at the mat because just looking in the screen, you can see we're picking up a skin tone and I really don't want to do that. So let's refine our mat by going to where it reads view. Currently it reads selected, click on the flyout and choose mat. As I said, we are picking up a lot of other values I do not want to pick up. Now you could use these diamond shapes in the color cube by grabbing them and starting to readjust them and trying to fine tune what values are being pulled. Just so you know, for reference, your zooming that you do in your viewport with your control and option and control and command for panning, they also work right here inside this cube area. So if I need to zoom in, I hold control and option and I can zoom in. If I need to pan, control command and I can pan around. And if you ever want to reset it to its default size or default zoom and pan value, you can click on the flyout that reads auto frame and choose home. And that's going to snap you back or resize the cube back to its default. Let's use our softness controls to eliminate values that we do not want in here. So if I click on the flyout, you'll see it reads minus softness. I choose that and I'll just click and drag in the view over his skin tone and so on. So we've eliminated that as part of the tolerance. Let's do that again. You have to reactivate the tool to do it again. If I click right now, it's not going to do anything. You have to come back, click on the flyout, and enable the softness one more time. And then I can just come in here and start clicking and dragging on this. At this point, the pixels that are still being picked up are fine with me because all we're going to do is desaturate these values a little further. But I do want to blur this a little bit. So you'll see the blur is active by default. Each one of these, the X or the Y, you can grab and blur independently. But if you hold Control and Option down and then click and drag on either one of them, you will proportionally blur both the X and the Y. I'll bring it to about five. That's good enough. Let's switch our view now back to looking at the result. Now, if I wanted to color correct this, I could just grab something like your midtones. And then you can see we can color correct just those values that are being picked up from the mat. That's not what we want to do, though. I want to take the saturation value and just drag this and really desaturate that. Now I'm noticing that part of the lamp is still a little more saturated than I want. So let's just do this. Let's switch over to selective number two. I'll click the pick custom again and I'll click and drag across the lamp, the area that was causing problems. Now it's picking up more up here, but that's fine because that's already desaturated. It's not going to matter. So let me switch my view back to result and I'll take the saturation down even further and you can see what's happening. We've now selectively desaturated these areas and at the master level, maybe we'll take our black and just decrease that just a tiny bit, maybe minus 0 0.020, that's good enough. That just brings a little more depth into the shadows. Let's exit out of here. So I choose exit, we're back at our timeline. Color Warper is affecting this clip, which is great. 